Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your grace and your mercy. For your grace and your mercy only, Father. You have made us to be able to be here and to be able to give. Father, we thank you and we honor your name. Father, we pray that this seed that you have sown today, Father, will be acceptable in the sight in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those that could not give today, Father, that you will give them to be able to give in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that this seed will go forth and do all your works in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we honor your name. And we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name, Father, we are prayed. Amen. Give your neighbor a compliment to the house. Amen. Don't give another man's wife compliment to the house. Amen. We don't want to say bread fights in church. Amen. I always tell people, if you're looking beautiful, you're looking beautiful. Simple, isn't it? Yes. Baby, you fight is baby, you fight. Boy, you are, you are, you are strong. The boys don't fight. Boys are strong. That's you know? awesome. Amen. That's awesome. You don't need them to be awesome. Once they are stronger, they are loaded. How many of you agree with me? Yes, sir. You just need to be strong and be loaded. And that's it. Even if you are the most ugly man that the face of Put your hand like this, girls will fall. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, give the glory to the Lord. There's no doubt you've shown us that. If you're celebrating 40 and we're all waiting for you. Amen. Amen. By the time you're celebrating 50, God help us. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. 50 years. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a round of applause. 50 wonderful years. Uh, Amen. Amen. I remember an MC said, for a man to live with a woman for that long, yeah. that man must have long suffered. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I don't know what he meant to. <laughs> because I've been married now for 20, almost 20 something, 24, 25 years. And I think I've not long suffered. Amen. She's not had there to my gray years. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. The man is still looking at some anyway, so give yourself a round of applause. You don't know what that you Daddy, I salute you. Amen. After 15 years, she's still as beautiful as this. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. Come on, what are you doing? Huh? You will mess up the <laughs> ah, Hallelujah. Ah, close your eyes as we pray now. Father, we thank you. What an awesome God you are. No one can compare to you. Father, you are so good, you are so beautiful, you are so lovely, you are so kind. Words cannot appreciate you enough. From the depths of our heart, we say thank you. Thank you for life. We are alive and we are well. That's why we are here today. Only the living can celebrate you as we are doing now. Father, we thank you, Lord, for 15 years of wedding peace. Thank you, Lord, for 40 years of existence of your daughter. Thank you, Lord, for that hope. Thank you for the wonderful children that you have blessed the home with. Thank you for their life thus far and thank you for the rest. Father, glorify your name Amen. in the name of Jesus. In every individual life that is here, Lord, make our lives beautiful. Amen. Let our life be worth celebrating Amen. in the name of Jesus. And even as we go into your word now, Father, I pray that you speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting King. Glory be to your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our time is fast spent, and I've promised myself to stop by 12 o'clock. So, are we going to do it?
Do I preach my message to you or do I speak to them? So I'll have to speak to you now. Amen. Psalm 84. Let's look at four verses there. Psalm 84. Let's look at it from verse 8 to 12. There's no doubt in my mind that we've done an adequate job this month. This is the month of fresh oil. And today, we are going to all be anointed with fresh oil. Why do you need your anointing of God? Why do you need it fresh oil? out of context. And I remember that I was trying to explain to you in my first message that in the exigencies of the scriptures, Psalm 92 was a post and cannot be written or used for any didactic reasoning. It's a prose. Prose is a prose. You can't reason out a prose. You can't use it for study. You just have to take it on the context of what it is. And in that particular psalm, David was making a statement there in that verse that we chose as a verse for the month. And I said, for you to have an understanding, you need to know certain concepts of life. Verse 9, for clearer understanding, says, For behold, your enemies, O Lord. For behold, your enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. And then verse 10. But my horn, you have exalted like a white ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. A while back, we spoke about the anointing. I remember I've preached about that before, the anointing. And we try and look at what comprises the anointing of God. I'm not going into that this morning. I'll just explain a little bit here now. One thing you need to have an understanding of from the prose that David wrote here is that in life you need fresh anointing from time to time. David was first anointed as a king of Israel in 1 Samuel chapter 16. When you look at it, that 1 Samuel 16 was written about David. David was anointed there by the time you get to verse 13. Samuel anointed him. And when Samuel anointed him, he anointed him for purpose. And the purpose of that anointing was for kingship. You and I need to have an understanding that God's, God does not waste his anointing. Amen. God does not do what? He does not waste his anointing. He does not waste resources. A lot of times we take it for granted that God mm, he will release the anointing on us. No? God does not waste resources. If he gives you resources, he's going to hold you accountable for what he has given you. If he gives you a gift, he will hold you accountable for the gift that he has given you. I sent some sheets of paper around. It's from me. I need an update. That's why I sent a sheet of paper around. Your names, phone number, and email. That's what I'm asking for. Praise the Lord. So don't think, oh, who is sending it? I am the one that sent it. So if you're writing it, you're writing it so I can update my data. Praise the Lord. Now, what am I saying here? David here was praying, but my heart, you have exalted like a wild ox. Why does he need anointing again? Because if you look into the life of David, David was a man that messes up a lot. He messed up with sin a lot. That from time to time, he's come to the realization that it is no longer possible for him that the anointing that God gave him as a king will still be resting over his life. So at every point in time that David has the opportunity, he's always asking God to anoint him. It's the same thing that you and I need to take up with ourselves. That as we live our life, life happens around us. Situations happen around us. That you as a child of God will be in doubt of whether your Christianity is still standing. When life happens around you, you tell lies at will. And I remember people have coined the phrase and said, God does not want lie, the white man does not want the truth. So how do we live? 
So you tell a little bit of light to the light white man, and then you come back to God and repent. But all these things depreciate the anointing in your life. Anytime you step out of the counsel of God, the anointing in your life depletes. Are you listening? Now, the reason why you need fresh oil is God will need to fill you at every point in time so that those depletion in your life will be refilled. Let me give you a small illustration. For those of us who are riding a car, you can liken the Holy Spirit in your life as the fuel, your gas. At a point, when you're driving the vehicle all over the place, which is your life, it indicates you're low on fuel. And after that, the red light shows. You need to get fuel now. And when, if you still ignore it at that point in time, and you still feel, oh, I can still, I can still move further, I can still move further, another light will show. And if you still feel, oh, I still got oil in me, and you still move further, the car will just make some coughing noise and stall on you. That is the same sequence that life happens for people. Devil knows the destiny that God has written for you. But why you and I don't take up this as of, as children of God, is that we don't take up this sense of the fact that even though God has us written our destiny, the enemy does not want us to actualize destiny. And if the enemy does not want you to actualize destiny, it's not going to come when you are so strong. It will come when the anointing in your life is so depleted. It will come the time it will be able to hit you one time and get you down. If you look into the life of David, when there was peace in his life and he felt he has arrived, the enemy struck. He was supposed to be in battle as the king of Israel. He chose to be at home like a lot of us chooses in our days now. He was in the wrong place on the right time. And he saw Bathsheba there. <laughs> Another man's wife, Uriah, the owner of the wife, was in the battlefront fighting on behalf of Israel. And he took the woman. And God says, No, you don't do that. I will contend with you. And he sent the prophet unto me and said, Tell him, how will you judge a man that has done this evil? Then he jumped up and he was ranting, Oh, let the man be punished four times. And God said, Four times I will kill in your house. As you have killed the right I will kill four people in your house. Who gave the anointing? God. Who punished David? God. So you need to be very careful with God. He killed the right quite right. He's an Hittite. He wasn't an Israelite. So there was no one to lament for him. No one to speak for him. The man even carried the letter of his death. Mm. Carried the letter of his death into the battlefront. Put him in the thick of the battle. Let me kill him so I can have what belongs to him. <laughs> Will God allow it? No. Absalom <laughs> and David cried. The Bible says David wept, and the whole nation of Israel heard him. Oh, my son Absalom, my son Absalom, I wish I had died in your place. Yeah, go eat him. You know, the Bible was quiet about the children that Bathsheba had before that. And a whole lot of times we go looking for trouble that is sleeping. Bathsheba came there and did what? He enthroned him son as the king of Israel. <laughs> Amen. Get understanding from the word of God. See, David knew that his heart and was messed up. He knew that his life was messed up. There was no way the anointing 
that made him king and sustain him. Because it was very easy for Absalom to chase him from the throne. It was very easy for Absalom to pitch a tent on the rooftop and was sleeping with all the concubines. Yes, he was sleeping with all the wives of David right on the rooftop. He was following the counsel of Ahitophel. So David was a man who knows that yesterday's anointing cannot sustain you today. Are you listening to what we say? You need fresh anointing. If you look at the prose the way it is written, look at verse 9. David was saying, Lord, your enemies, please kill them. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. He now said, but my heart. From that sentence, you can actually deduce that he was saying, but me, oh, I'm not a worker of iniquity. So raise all my head. Hallelujah. There are a lot of hidden things that are in the Psalms. What are the things that the anointing of God does in your life? I will mention five things that the anointing of God can do for you. One, it anoints you for purpose if you have never been anointed before. Some people have certain gifts or talents in their life, but they've never at any point in time been anointed in their life for that office. So the first time that the oil is their head, it stirs up the gift of God in their life. And they begin to run according to their destiny. Two, You've been anointed before and you are running the race now. But your gas is showing red, 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 red. Yeah, red. Why is it showing red? Red, when you're supposed to be in the presence of God, you're somewhere else. It no longer bothers you to be in his presence. That gas is gone, bro. You see, a whole lot of time we come to church and we say we want the spirit to move. You are the container of the spirit of God. Did you get that? The Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6 to 10. Look at it. Things changed in the new dispensation. In the Old Testament, if you read it, the Bible will tell you. And the Holy Spirit came upon that guy and used him for a while and left. But look at it. In the new dispensation. 2 Corinthians tells you in, in 4 of it. It says, God has commanded the light to shine out of darkness. And it has shined well in our hearts to give us what? Knowledge of the glory of God and the face of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then where do we have the treasures? Atten verses. Who are the Atten verses? You and I. This art industry is going to break one day. Yeah. And the Bible says that. That the excellency of that power may be of God, not of us. So what happened in the new dispensation? The Bible tells me in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, that look, if any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. All things are now new. What God does for you is he takes away the old nature from you. Gives you the new nature at the bath. And then what he does with you, because you are a vessel and you are having, he fills you. He fills you with his spirit. Amen. And what happens when we gather together is I'm coming with my own vessel with the anointing. You're coming with your own vessel of anointing. And we all gather together at a point. Amen. And what we do at that point is we manifest the anointing in our vessels. If our vessels are empty, nothing will happen. Jesus shared a parable in Matthew 25 about that. Wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Every man will be held accountable to their action. That is what he was saying there. The wise virgin took oil. The foolish ones did not take oil. Remember, we're talking about fresh oil. In midnight, 
or at midnight. There was a bride. The bridegroom is here. Everybody was streaming the alarms. <laughs> those with oil, yeah, they were still burning. But those without oil, their lamps were already out. Their lamps were what? Already out. And when they were begging, give us oil. What is those who have the oil? What was it they were telling them? <laughs> no, 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 no. You can share everything. You can share the oil. Do you understand that? You can share everything. You can share the anointing. That is what he was saying. You need this personal feeling of the anointing. And by the time they came back, the door was already closed forever. That means the door of grace was closed. You need to have an understanding of what we say. Hallelujah. So what the anointing will do in your life when it comes upon your head today is you'll be anointed before the service. But somehow the oil has gone. Like you go to the filling station to have a top off, so your car can well. It's the same way the anointing drops into your life again today and refreshes you. Praise the Lord. To the celebrant, let's go to your verse very quickly. Our time is gone. Psalm 8 4, verse 8 to 12. It's very straightforward. I want you to take that home and read it to yourself. And then walk in line of what that verse was saying to you. Verse 8 says, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, Behold our shield. And then what does he say? No good thing will be withheld. And look upon the face of your anointed. Praise the Lord. They will equally be anointed today. He runs up and tells God, He said, He is the man that trusted him. He says, For a day your court is better than a day. You see, one thing that complacency did not tell you in that Sunday school pamphlet is immediately you leave God alone, He leaves you alone as well. It's very easy for the Holy Spirit to depart. The moment the Holy Spirit is grieved in your life, it leaves you alone. Hallelujah. And you can know one thing. The day God anoints another person to replace you in ministry, the Spirit of God in your life lives forever. Did you get what I'm saying? So if God has anointed you for a purpose, and you made up your mind for God, I'm no longer fit for use. He anoints a replacement. And the day he anoints your replacement is the day that you kill yourself. And guess what? The devil knows all those things. The devil knows that God is a God that operates by principle. Rise on your feet. The anointing of God this morning is simple. You anoint my head with fresh water. When God anoints your head, he wants you to succeed effortlessly. That it was a mess. But for you to believe that, you need to trust God. That's it. God is the only one that can ask you to jump. And he will catch you. If I ask you to jump, and you jump. <laughs> I don't have the strength to catch you. But the one that you can jump, and he will catch you, is God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, no good thing. They will do it. They that trust in him. I'm praying for you that no good things will be withheld from you. Amen. But you need to do one thing. You need to walk uprightly with him. Amen. Amen. A lot of us are still walking circumspectly. <laughs> Today you will be a child of God. Tomorrow you will be a half child of God. Another day you will be a quarter child of God. You need to walk uprightly as far as God is concerned. Praise the Lord. What do you desire the anointing to do in your life today? The anointing can restore. As another thing that the anointing of God can do. It can restore. Because by the time you get to Psalm 51 again. David prayed and said, God restore unto me the joy of my salvation. He knew that joy was gone. He knew. So don't deceive yourself. But by the time you get to Charles Psalm 23, 
He said, surely after his cup was full and was running over. Say, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That is a man who is sure and knows what the future will be. All the days of my life. He didn't say for a few years of my life. All what? The days. The anointing of God is to last you for a lifetime. Bro. God does not anoint a man and leave. Mm. He can't leave you in 70. Even when you are 80, he's still there. At 80, he called Moses. Moses thought he knew what he has to do for God. Yes, he never knew it. He knows I'm a deliverer. But there was no oil in his life. Because he has lived 40 years in Egypt. So, with what power will you fight for Israel? He tried it and he failed. So God left him for 40 years. And then after 40 years, God anointed him. And that 80 years old man started leading 3 million people. Hallelujah. What do you want the anointing of God to do in your life today? I'm sending you into a purpose. Anoint my head with oil. Another time we'll talk about what the anointing does in the life of a man. There are a lot of things that the anointing of God does. I had another one. The anointing of God can impact a gift that is missing in your life, even now. Amen. I mean, when the anointing of God comes over your life, it gives you a gift that was not there before. I love you. I've given you four already. Amen. <laughs> so, what do you want the anointing of God to do? I'm working on to the fifth one. <laughs> Uh, what do you want the anointing of God to do in your life today? Thou anoint my head with fresh oil. And that my head you are raising up like the head of a unicorn. The head of a unicorn is always raised because of the horn there. Amen. So what do you want the anointing of God to do? It can anoint you first into purpose. It can refresh you. Today's anointing can be a refreshment on the anointing of God over your life. That means there are anointing, you've been anointed and anointed and anointed, and today is just a refreshing. Amen. Just like you put a booster into your foil. So this anointing will serve as a boost for you. The anointing can restore. Can restore former anointing that you have lost. And I said the anointing can impact you with a gift that is lacking in your life. Those are four. So if you want to be anointed in any of these four, just come forward. Very quickly. Let them know in the children department what I said. And any one of them that wants to be anointed. Very quickly. Come forward very quickly. Ushers. Just four. I mentioned four things. And make sure you know what you have been anointed for. Praise the Lord. What I'll tell you is fresh oil. Then you say what you want that impartation to be in your life. Do you have an understanding of what we say? I'm giving you the fresh oil of God. But what do you want the anointing to do in your life?
In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Two prayer points, very quickly, right here. The anointing can bring you into your destiny. Amen. So, I told you that the anointing of God is the raising you up your head into purpose. So, you're going to cry out unto God and say, Father, beginning from now, lift me up into purpose. From wherever I may be before. Lord, lift me up into your purpose for my life. Let me actualize destiny in the name of Jesus. Lift me up, lift me up, lift me up, lift me up into purpose in the name of Jesus. Lift me up into purpose in the name of Jesus. Let your anointing over my life, Father. Today, 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 today. Let your anointing lift me up into purpose in the name of Jesus. Father, I want to enter into your purpose for my life. In the name of Jesus, I from last week, oh Lord, let me begin to make progress. In the name of Jesus, thank you. For in Jesus' name we pray. Lastly, you're going to pray. The anointing of God. I don't know why the Holy Spirit wants you to pray this one, but that's my last prayer. Translate life into death, or translate death into life. Did you get what I'm saying? He can do it both ways. It means if there is a death sentence over your life, the, oh, the anointing of God can break that yoke of death and give you life. So I want you to pray for yourself. Father, any yoke of death in my life, let it be broken to death on the cause of anointing. Any yoke of poverty in my life, let it be broken to death because of the anointing. Every yoke of failure, every yoke of disappointment, every yoke of Oneness, every yoke of disappointment, let them be broken in my life in the name of Jesus. Every circle of failure, let them be broken in the name of Jesus. Let them be broken in the name of Jesus. Every circle of untimely death, every circle of sicknesses, every circle of disappointment, every circle of rejection. Father, let them be broken in my life. In the name of Jesus, let only your hand and your purpose be established in the name of Jesus. I want you to point your hands towards her and leave on your knees, please. Commit her into the hands of the Lord and prophesy into her future. Go ahead, pray, 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 pray for her. Speak prophetically into her future. Father, we declare your greatness upon your daughter. I pray for you that your strength will not fail. I pray for you that the grace of God will abide over your life in the name of Jesus. The Lord will make your life beautiful. He will decorate you, Lord, with grace, with glory, with favor, with joy, with happiness all the days of your life. Your days will not be cut short in the name of Jesus. The purpose of God of, for creating you will be actualized. You will fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. The action of God will refresh you and will cause you to rise up like a giant. I will cause you to begin to run and walk according to the purpose of God for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your days will not be cut short. Your strength will not fail. In the name of Jesus. Long life God will grant unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus. As you have celebrated 40, you will celebrate 50. You will celebrate 60. You will celebrate 70. You will celebrate 80. You will celebrate 90. And if God grace you 100. In the name of Jesus, your desires will be granted. In the name of Jesus, great will be your joy, great will be your peace. In the name of Jesus, thank you, everlasting King. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Daddy Joyner and the family, and let's pray for the family together. Let's commit them into the hands of the Lord. Fifteen years of marriage. Daddy, join your wife. Are you shy? <laughs>
part of the 15 years, don't you? 15 years ago, you guys are not there. Uh, uh, so join them now. Amen. Blessing. Blessing. Nice blessing. Okay, let's begin to pray for this family. Let's commit them into the hands of the Lord. Let's pray that God will lead them for the rest of their life. The last 15 years has been glorious, Lord. We are grateful. Father, we ask for the rest of their life. Lead them. And they trust you as the God that can do all things. Father, prove yourself in the name of Jesus. Do you know we told any good things from them? In the name of Jesus. We are testifying of this 15 years, Lord. Father, we pray, oh Lord, let them shine an example in the name of Jesus. Let all that look at them and be encouraged. In the name of Jesus. Uphold them to the light. In the name of Jesus. Bless their children, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Grant them the grace and the wisdom that they need. In the mighty name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father Lord, we pray for your children. We stand to hear and witness the testimony of the past 15 years. We are grateful for thus far you have led them. We are grateful for all the blessings of this marriage. We are grateful for 40 years of existence of your daughter. In all, Daddy, we say thank you. Thank you, Daddy. For 15 years of marriage, thank you. For 40 years, Daddy, thank you. For the rest of their life, Father, we commit them into your hands. Lord, lead them. Walk with them in the name of Jesus. Walk through them in the name of Jesus. As they trust in you, don't we told any good things from them in the name of Jesus. Bless them for the rest of their life. Let them be friends of one another. Let their children do well. Let their home stand as a shining example for others to emulate in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting King. Every blessing that we have pronounced upon them as a house of faith, Lord, I pray, let those blessings follow them Amen. until every one of them is performed Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Thank King. You, Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Thanksgiving service. Are you? Yes. What thank you will have. Yes. Amen. We oh, invite the choir. Give them dancing. Wow. Wow. Wow.
give you thanks. Thanksgiving shall not cease in their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, in addition, we thank you for the 15 years of marital home. Father, marriage is a long time decision ordained by you. We then decree and declare over their lives that you give them everything it takes for a happy home in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, give them love. Amen. Give them happiness. Amen. Joy unspeakable shall be their passion Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, for your daughter that celebrated her 40th birthday, Father, we, Chapel of Victory, are wishing her prosperous New Year's and Amen. New Year ahead in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Isaiah 3 10 says, Send to the righteous shall be well with them, yes. and they shall eat their food. Do yes. Father, it shall be well with them. Amen. Upon their family, Amen. upon their children. Amen. Father, in academic field, they shall be excellent. Amen. Father, sickness shall be far from them. Amen. Poverty shall be far from them. Amen. Isaiah, uh, Psalm 118 said, I shall not die, but live to declare the work of God. Yes. Father, none of them shall die. Amen. Untimely death shall not be their portion in Jesus' name. Father, preserve their going out. Amen. Preserve their coming in. Amen. Father, above all, no weapon fashion against them shall prosper. Amen. Every man that shall rise against them in judgment shall be condemned. Amen. Father, for the invitees that defied whatever programs they have to come here, Father, shall be well with them. Amen. Father, locate them with their message this Amen. week. Father, Bobo, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I cover this family with the blood of Jesus. I cover the church of God with the blood of Jesus. The workers, I cover them with the blood of Jesus. They shall be well with us. In Jesus' name, we have pray. Amen. Let the congregation say Amen. the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the hands of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.
Nobody can say no. It is a sin, nobody can.